Night Spring is in shambles. A mess. How can I clean that which continues to dirty itself? Oh, these responders have gone too far. Oh, go on, dear. You know I'm thrilled to help. The better question is, what is right? Everything has run amok. Chaos. Chaos! The responders have taken over the White Spring. Imagine all of the dirty footprints on the carpet. Dust all over the tables. The horror. Yes. I hadn't forgotten. Oh. I am but a humble servant of the White Spring Resort, dedicated to greeting each guest with pleasantries and candor. Or I was, back when our guests had class and decorum. It's some sort of relief effort for all of the refugees in and around Appalachia. Uh, if only there was a relief effort for my stress. That would be the enigmatic Orlando. They oversee the White Spring and are allowing the responders to stay here, as well as their constituents. I do apologize for the mess. Please enjoy your stay. If you see anyone struggling out in Appalachia, be sure to tell them about the White Spring. Oh, well, hello, darling. A pleasure to meet another guest of our fine establishment. I am Orlando, Folks your host and management camps. liaison. They join to make a if you'll pardon me for just one moment, that will be all. Please give my regards to Ms. Rucker. If you are here for leisure, I regret to inform you that our regular resort activities are temporarily unavailable. However, if you are here for the refuge and the fine work of the lovely responders, I am delighted to welcome you on their behalf. Ah, perhaps you have not heard. The White Spring is now home to the refuge, a place of safety and care for all in need. The refuge is being run by the responders, individuals committed to the well-being of their fellows. They founded the refuge in response to new waves of refugees coming to Appalachia. People in great need of help. Food, medical care, clothing, a place to sleep. All of these are available for those who need them. Anyone in need of help, yes. You appear more well off than our usual guests, though, if I may say so. Less bedraggled than those poor souls. Armed. The refuge exists primarily to serve those who cannot help themselves. The starving, the sick, the homeless. There is a clinic, a kitchen, beds, recreational facilities, all manner of care to be found here. I'm so pleased to be able to assist in my own small way, of course. Of course, dear. The owners of the White Spring itself. The resort, hotel, golf course, all of it. Very much still alive, I assure you, though regrettably unable to oversee affairs in current circumstances. As such, now that we have new guests, they have sent me in their stead to take care of things as needed. I couldn't be more pleased to do so. A delicious opportunity to be of help and meet Attention, fascinating citizens. people such as Nuclear yourself. Strike imminent. Please exit the area at your earliest convenience. Thank you for your cooperation. What a wonderful thing for you to ask, darling. I knew there was something special about you from the moment I saw you. As it happens, the responders are looking for volunteers to assist them in a particular outreach effort. Those industrious wonders have repaired a vertebrate to full working order and are using it to make contact with more distant settlements. They've made allies with people in Pittsburgh, the locals call it the Pit now, who seem to be in dire need of outside assistance. If you don't mind me saying so, 
You look like you can handle yourself. You might be just who they're looking for. Well, they'll be better able to explain the details, but I believe they're looking for fighters, actually. Their contacts in the pit are in something of a desperate situation, it seems, against a dangerous enemy. I hate the thought of you putting yourself in such danger, but it does appear to be for a good cause. Judging by what I've heard, it's an accurate one, sadly. Pittsburgh was bombed quite severely during the war. The poor individuals still living there have renamed it to better reflect its dreadful circumstances. They call themselves the Union. Something of a resistance movement, I understand, against more aggressive forces. One of their representatives is currently staying with us, a Mr. Skippy Rorich. Delightful man. Still getting used to sleeping with both eyes closed. Indeed, isn't that marvelous? They salvaged it and painstakingly repaired it. It's fully functional now. I was very pleased to be able to contribute to this effort in my own small way. If you wish to see it, it resides on the roof of the refuge between flights, along with its charming pilot, Ms. Lennox. Oh, you're terribly brave, aren't you, dear? Imagine if we all had such courage. Now, darling, before anybody bundles you off, the first thing you should do is introduce yourself to some of the responders. I just so happen to know a few in need of more local assistance, and helping them will earn you the other thing you'll need. That other thing being, of course, their trust. The vertebrae does belong to them, after all. I skip you guys a little crazy, but I can't help but like him. Our lovely Ms. Rucker is the closest thing to a leader the refuge has. Though I believe she's less than comfortable with the title, you can find her in their headquarters, beyond the dining area. The darling chef, Miss Rousseau, needs some assistance in the kitchen, I hear. And Miss Wagner, over in the common area, is looking for donations. I'm sure your generosity will be well rewarded. Wonderful, my dear. I'm certain you will be a tremendous help to them and the refuge. When you are finished with each of them, I recommend you speak with Mr. Skippy Rorich, the pit union representative. I imagine he'll want to discuss the situation in the pit with you before you embark. Do feel free to visit me at your leisure if you wish to chat. I have an office in the management wing. You can't miss it. Hey, Swartz. You wouldn't happen to be handy with an electro-compression spanner, would you? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you aren't. I invented the thing. Sorry to put you on the spot, kid. I'm Skippy Rorich. But you can call me Skip, Row, Skippo, or whatever else you fancy. I'm here on behalf of the Union. We're a band of loose-knit freedom fighters from the pit up north. We're looking to get our home back from a group of raiders called the Fanatics. Hoping Appalachia has some help to offer in that. The pit is, well, it used to be Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now it's something else entirely, overrun by all manner and nasty. But it's our home, and we want to win it back, clean it up, and make it livable again. Oh, don't worry about that thing. Barely works anyway. Silly to bring it up. Oh, we're past the electro spanner. Consign it to the dustbin of history. I'm moving on to the Hydrolo Spanner. Much higher ceiling on that one. Whoa, alrighty then. Fair enough, kid. Er, friend. Fair enough. I'll watch my tongue from now on. Not at all. Ask away. And I'll tell you everything you want to know. 
The Union is our grand experiment in human decency in the pit. All the people working together to rebuild a place that most say ain't worth rebuilding. We fight the fanatics, the ferals, and any other awful thing that stands to hold back progress in the Steel City. And there are a lot of those. Well, you know, we used to be a trade union before the war. A lot of us are holdovers from those days, old factory hands, sticking together now like we did then. But we take all kinds, so long as they share the goal of winning back our foul city and making it fair again. That mix makes us a rowdy bunch, but it's also our secret sauce. Our eclectic minds think of things our enemies wouldn't imagine. So we stay one step ahead, or even an inch ahead, but that's enough to keep us in the game. Quite frankly, because the odds are stacked against us. We represent civilization in the pit. Most folks up there have put that by the wayside, given in to their animal instincts. We want our home back, but we can't do it alone. That's all there is to it. If the fanatics unite the pit, They'll start marching elsewhere. That's trouble for Appalachia. Trouble for you. If that ain't motivation enough, well, I'll make it worth your while. Don't you worry. War breeds innovation. If there's one thing we have, it's that. We can build you all manner of fighting gear. Guns, grenades, armor, you name it. It'll be yours if you give us your aid. I'm the Union's inventor, quartermaster, and coordinator. I'm the brain guy. I use the know-how in this dome here of mine to help the kids in the field in any way I can. Sure thing. Can I? Of course. Will I? Also, of course. It's hell. What else can I say? What the bombs didn't level, the fanatics finished off. The air is choked with soot, the water is undrinkable, and the rads sear your skin like the sun of the Sahara. It's horrible, but it's home. No matter how bad it is or gets, we believe we can turn it around. That's what we're fighting for. Before the war? Well, it wasn't a paradise, but still a sight to behold. The Steel City, we called it. A center of industry, making anything you can imagine. When the war rolled around, we built weapons, munitions, vertebrates, power armor, robots. I suppose that's what made us a target, and left us what we are now. The fanatics are a bunch of sadists, is what they are. They bill themselves as a confederation and say they take all comers for who or what they are. That's nonsense, of course. Just an empty slogan. Used to sucker in more labor for the mills. All right. I'm game. <laughs> Twist my arm, why don't you? Only been good at one thing in my life, and that's building things, so that's what I do. People call me a mad scientist. I built my fair share of oddities, but innovation takes risk. Parachutes sound crazy, too, but they work. I'm lucky to have the time I have left after what I've been through. I'm not gonna waste it playing safe. Well, I'm a Pittsburgh man through and through. Daddy worked the steel mills hard, but I took a different route. Tinkering for an armaments firm. This may surprise you, but I did everything by the book back then. Everything done to spec. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Life was stable, but boring as hell. I didn't really start living until after the bombs. They woke me up good. One good thing about making weapons of war for Uncle Sam is that they build those manufactories to last. The plant I worked in may as well have been a bunker, like one of those vault tech vaults the Richies bought themselves. When the bombs came down, enough stood standing to keep us lucky few alive. What came after? The Rads, the Ferals. The fanatics. That was a real test. Well, now that you mention it, you ever heard of a pterodactyl? Old creature, massive wingspan. 
Big wingspans intrigue me. We won't be building new vertebrates anytime soon, so I was thinking we need a replacement. Tired of hearing about me, eh? Oh, uh, well, <clears throat> okay then. Anytime, my friend. If you see anyone struggling out in Appalachia, be sure to tell them about the White Spring. So this Shannon. is the White Spring, all you damn Another people. scotch. Ma'am. What about you, Liz? Have you made up your mind yet? Oh, Bill's keen on Charleston. We were social with the governor. I'm sure he'd make arrangements for us. Evans? That snake? He was always for sale. Not a terrible thing if you're the buyer. Can you imagine parading into town like a troop of beggars? And Charleston knew this. It always was a slum. Now, with refugees swarming like flies, Ugh. No. The resorts are the better option. If the White Spring won't have us, we should try Pleasant Valley. Even Sunny Top. Sunny Top? Really? I'm not there for the skiing. Or the clientele. But I'd rather stay at a shoddy lodge than take my chances with... Whatever may be going on down in the valley. Ma'am! Just set it down, set it down. Now, let's finish this rubber. Dollar a point. Your water before you drink it. Well, seems like timing is one of your strong suits. Look, I can stitch up a gash with the best of them, but Appalachia... Well, she can do a lot worse than cut us open. Got a lot of folks here with sickness we don't understand, and injuries we don't know how to treat. What we need more than anything is know-how. So I propose we trade what I got that I don't need for what you need that you don't got. I've heard you're looking ahead into the pit, and the only safe way out of Appalachia is that metal bird Lennox has perched up on the roof. She don't fly without my approval, and right now, you ain't got it. So, that's the deal. You bring back medical information that'll help me figure out how to help these folks. And I'll okay your little expedition. We've narrowed down what we need to Vault Tech's Agricultural Center. Can the responders count on you? Really it sounds crazy, but just before the bombs fell, the war had taken up so many resources that animal doctors were told to start treating humans. Whatever the hospitals did to train up those folks, I'm betting it's something we could use, too. So, what do you say? Want to help the responders make a difference? Nice. Well, let's get to it, then. Anything you're able to find, go ahead and bring it back to our lead medic. I'll let her know to look for you. Good luck out there. Folks don't join the responders for caps. They join to make a difference. Heard you were out there giving us a hand. Were you able to find the hospital field guide? With this, we might be able to turn our little clinic into a proper hospital. Thanks for getting this back to us. The responders won't forget it. There's times you gotta accept the cards you were dealt, and learn to make the best of it. Why even bother helping people who can't help themselves?
this carpet. I love Esme's cooking. It's been so long since I've had food with actual flavor. Well, you're not bleeding through your shirt. <laughs> I call that a good day. Name's Rucker. I head up the responders around here. Better believe it. And it's my job to make sure we stick around this time. Uh, nothing right now, believe that or not. Check in again soon, though. Almost always something that needs doing around here. Thought you might. <laughs> Go on ahead. Well, it took a minute and a miracle, but yeah. When I first got back to Appalachia, the other responders were all but wiped out. A couple of folks wandering around wearing a uniform, but not a one doing any organizing or, hell, making any real work out of it. So I started reading everything I could find and listening to anything anyone could tell me about the group before they all passed. I realized that while the responders themselves didn't make it, the idea could be brought back. And this time, for good. Nice enough place. Heard it used to be some kind of fancy trading post before the war. Can't say I'm overly fond of this management that Orlando's wrapped up in, but... I got work needs doing, and I'm not one to turn down a safe place to do it in. I'm also not in love with all the hammering and drilling they got going on, but I'm not complaining. Well, starting now, I'm not. It was an army brat before the bombs fell. My dad was a medic and always wanted to be where the action was. Well, dad's company took a direct hit. I think his biggest regret was that he wasn't here in Appalachia when it all went down. I wanted to do right by him, so I figured the next best thing was to make the trek back here myself and do what I thought he would have done. Wasn't easy. Uh, me and a few other stragglers had to pick our way down the East Coast, ducking and dodging everything that moved except each other. Not the kind of experience one wants to talk about much. You understand. Sure thing. I keep the responders, well, responding. We've grown enough now that most of the different departments organize themselves fairly well. But everyone needs a fire lit under them from time to time, and these days, that's where most of my hours go. That, and keeping Orlando from sniffing around. Depends on who you mean. Hell. I can't get Orlando to tell me about Orlando. Not that I'm ungrateful for the space they're giving us here, mind you, but I've never met this management they go on about. And I don't trust anyone who can't or won't show their face. Need anything? Nice enough, feller, considering what's going on back in the pit. Resourceful, too, in a way that's hard to come by these days. I won't pretend I ever got my head all the way around this union he's part of, but he knows who his people are and does everything he can to keep them amongst the living. Yeah, we're cut from common cloth like that. Lord, that kid. If you're asking me about him, then I take it you haven't had the pleasure of him talking both your ears off at once. No Truth told, I think the brother who gave him a job just to stop him from jawing at him for five minutes. I'd begrudge their peace if it didn't come at the cost of our quiet. At least with his yakking, he can't sneak up on you. Orlando, on the other hand. You got a wow. That's your gift, Jeremiah. If you see anyone struggling out in Appalachia, be sure to tell them about the White Spring. Well, hello there, stranger. Pleased to meet you. I'm Sophie, Sophie Wagner. Look around. The Refuge. Quite a place, isn't it? I mean, sure, fancy pants, golf club, resort, that's nice, but I'm talking about the Refuge. A haven for the lost, the dispossessed, the hungry, and unfortunate. 
a monument to our ability to have compassion for each other. Isn't it grand? Isn't it worth preserving, building, growing? Oh, the work I do is extremely Now that's cool. what I'm talking about. People supporting each other. You got the right spirit. Rucker's put me in charge of running a bit of a donation drive. Have you met Rucker? She's amazing, you should. Anyway, it might surprise you to know an operation like this is always churning through supplies. We work hard to keep things in stock, and that funny Orlando character does their best to help out as well, but... Well, we still have shortfalls. So here I am, asking generous folks such as yourself to help us fill in those gaps and keep the refuge running. Let me check my notes. Rucker's been in a tizzy because we just don't have enough wood to keep up. It'd be a big help if you could donate maybe 50 pieces of scrap. One less thing on Rucker's mind, you know. I'm glad they chose to send me somewhere safe and not some. You do? Amazing. Thank you so much. This is going to be a big help. It just so happens I got a little something for you as a reward for your generosity. We might need a lot of things, but you know how it is. Poor in one way, rich in another. I'll put together some of what we can spare for you. And I've got a feeling you're gonna need them. See? Mutual aid. Everybody wins. Thanks so much for the help. Drop by again. If I know Rucker, I'll be looking for something new every day. Take care of yourself. That I'm not good enough. I just try to remember that I managed to get here in the first place. There I go, reassuring myself. Folks don't join the responders for caps. They join to make a difference. Allison's a good kid. But that brotherhood gig of his isn't going to make him any money. Do you... Ah, a customer. Here to peruse or buy? Either way, prepare your eyes for a feast of the senses, huh? A spectacle like no other. Oh, I got a bit carried away, didn't I? <laughs> Forgot to properly introduce myself. Giuseppe Della Ripa, at your service. Tradesman and curio collector. Welcome to Giuseppe's Curio. Buy, sell, trade, and count. I'm a collector of oddities and eccentricities, and I sell those eccentricities for the right price. Perhaps I might have something to your liking. Oh, I've called many places home. Clarksburg, New York, now Appalachia again. But none ring truer in my heart than the homeland. Italia! Ah, I believe in your language. It is simply Italy. I was born there. I remember very little of it. There's still a connection. I think there's something that binds you to where your ancestors are from. It may not make sense if you've been raised in a place your family has always had roots in. Ah, don't mind me. I'm just rambling at this point. What makes it worse is knowing I can never go back. That, and not knowing what Italy's fate was after the bombs. Who knows what it looks like now? You walk past and see a sparkle at the edge of your vision. Maybe it's a dusty mirror or a long forgotten urn. A decades old music box. That's a curio. Fame and fortune. <laughs> Or maybe just fortune. Hmm. Perhaps neither. It's easier to earn money than to search for what you're really looking for. 
Let's just say I'm looking for some things I've lost that may be found again. I don't know if I can find them definitively, but it is worth the risk. I have books upon books of riddles. They keep a man entertained. Besides, it's a good conversation starter. You have only ever seen me in the distance. Never up close. Look in any direction and I will be there. What am I? Yes, the horizon, forever in the distance. No matter how far you walk, you will never reach it. Do come back. My friends didn't want to join up with me. Said the responders sounded like too much work. I wonder what they're doing now. Bonjour! My name is Esme Rousseau. But most people around here know me as Chef Esme. We've had some representatives from Foundation and Crater come here seeking assistance with the recent influx of refugees. I thought that we could help them out by providing some food for their people. I've started a pot of venison and tato stew. One of my newest creations. Would you be able to help me finish it? How wonderful! I can't wait to whip up something delicious for everyone! The stew requires tetos, venison, salt, black pepper, and carrots. The ingredients can be found in our storage area. Your job is to grab the ingredients and put them in before the stew burns. Super! Let's have you start by stirring the stew, which will help keep it from burning. Remember Potatoes to continuously stir amazing. during the cooking process. So fresh, and only a few rats. Fantastic! Let's get the first of the ingredients and prepare them. I heard a bunch of nerds arguing over comic book heroes yesterday. Aren't there more important things to worry about? There's no problem too big to solve. There's times you've got to accept the cards you were dealt, and learn to make the best of it. required help yourself to any table hmm. Hmm. this blood leaf aioli really elevates the mirelurk meat Smelling delicious! Let's add more flavor with some salt and pepper now. Please seat yourself. A waiter will be with you shortly. I was out scavenging for food earlier. Only got attacked by Great scorched work. once. Now that your stew is done, it is time to add your own special touch. Some added flavor is a fantastic idea. This stew rivals my own talents. 
You must cook with me again sometime. Here is your finished stew. Now, it is time to feed some of the hungry. I believe you can find the raider and settler representatives in the bar area. You must make a choice, since there is not enough to feed everyone, I'm afraid. I'll do my best to gather more ingredients so that we can cook again another time. This carpet was a pretty bold choice, and not one. Are you at the refuge? We've got people going hungry, and too many mouths to feed at Foundation. Wow, this has a kick to it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Reminds me of something my mom would make. Thank you so much. These refugees wouldn't last one day, Crater. It is a lot of work to maintain the property. A safe haven filled with people trying to help others. It feels like I've died and gone to heaven. Poor hell. <sighs> Rolling hills, shady trees, clear water. Appalachia almost makes a guy want to retire. Hey there, sport. What brings you back my way? That's right, looking for someone to help us take the fight to the fanatics. Surprised we got a taker, actually. You are interested, right? The Union's back's against the wall. We're doing our best to hold off the fanatics. Keep them from taking everything. Occasionally, we win some small victories, but not a lot. Got a couple of situations back there right now where an extra hand might tip things in our favor, at least for now. I don't want to call it mercenary work, but I'm not gonna lie. You'll be going there to fight. Hell, you've got raider gangs here, right? I've heard about your blood eagles. The fanatics are something like them, but more organized. Imagine every single raider gang you've ever heard got together and decided to make like Genghis Khan. Sweep over everything. Kill anyone who won't join and put anyone too weak to fight into forced labor camps. Everything that's not theirs, they take. That's the fanatics. And be glad they're not here. The Union is a sort of a... I guess you might call us a confederation, or a resistance. People banding together for defense. See, there's a group in the pit. Calls themselves fanatics. All they care about is conquest. They want the whole pit for themselves. They roll into your area. You either join them, they force you to labor for them, or they kill you. And they're coming for everybody. The Union's the only thing standing between them and their total conquest of the pit. As much as we're able, anyway. Bad. Don't get me wrong. It's home, and I want us to keep it. But we got hit bad in the war, and we've never recovered. Lots of radiation. Some areas are badly toxic, with all the junk that got blasted into the air or spread around from the factories. People are sick a lot, from one thing or another, and food can be hard to come by. Hell, some of the city's still on fire, I think. But some of the factories survived, and we got them running. Gives us access to things you can't get anywhere else. Might even be able to rebuild, if it weren't for the fanatics. Because it's home, damn it. Mine, ours, all of us who were born and lived there before and after the bombs. Ain't that enough? If the fanatics are out of the picture, we can rebuild. Make something out of it again. It doesn't have to stay like it is. If that ain't enough for you, picture this. A horde of fanatics, hundreds, thousands strong, setting their sights here. Sound like something you want? Fantastic. Let me just get Rucker in here. It's her bird, after all.
Thanks for coming by, Rucka. Looks like we got a volunteer to take a trip out to the pit. We've met. Had a feeling you might be up for this when you came by earlier. Guess I was right. Figured you should be involved, if we're gonna borrow your plane. Don't let Lennox hear you call it a plane. She takes it personally. Anyway, sure thing. You've done right by me. So you got the okay for me. Sophie and Esme tell me you helped them out too. So as far as the responders are concerned, you're good to go. Well, we got two different locals I know are in need of help. Locals are what we call union groups that act independently. Local 42's in the industrial district. Hacks their leader is struggling to keep her people alive and retake a foundry from the fanatics. We got another over in the trench working against a fanatic forced labor camp. Danilo is your contact there. Haven't heard from the other locals recently, but I'm sure we'll be hearing from them if they got trouble too. It's up to you who you want to help right now. Maybe you'll consider going back again later for the other. No can do, Spoya. I'll go back one day, but right now, I'm more use here. Rustling up support to send back there. I'm not young enough to be much use on the front lines anymore. Fair enough. What do you want to know? Well, uh... Well, I can answer that, Skippy. First of all, we've got refugees here from the pit. People who've made it all the way down on foot or in caravans. And the best way to help that situation is to help people not need to flee the pit in the first place. Second, the Union's the best chance of stability the pit's got. The responders don't just want a triage in the world. We want to help it rebuild one day. We'll need allies to do that. It doesn't hurt that we've got factories that can still make manufactured goods, either. No, it does not. All right. All set? Got everything? Great. This means a lot to the Union. I'll make sure you're well rewarded for it. I might have some other things I need help with here in Appalachia, too. I'll let you know. Good luck up there. We're counting on you.